Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to those of you who are here in the building, to those who are online also. And uh, welcome to any visitors. And especially, um, we would like to um, welcome Simone and Terry, um, who are our speakers this morning from, uh, from Latin Link. Um, and we've had connections with Latin Link for a long time through our support for Mike and Esther Terry. Um, so, welcome. So, um, through our studies in Matthew so far this year, we've learned so much about mission, uh, the mission to spread the gospel. And we will finish those studies sometime in um, 2024. But we will definitely finish it um, with those famous words from Matthew chapter 28, um, verses 19 to 20. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So may God open our hearts to desire to spread the gospel, the good news of Jesus, wherever he calls us, whether it's here, whether it's elsewhere in the UK, or whether it's abroad. Just do what God wants us to do. And may God open our eyes to see what he is doing in Latin America. Um, and may he challenge us through, through all of that also. So let's begin with prayer. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for the privilege of being in your presence. Thank you for what you want to do here today. We exalt your name. We give you all the glory. Lord, we pray that you will challenge us, that you will speak to us, that you will uh, meet our needs. Lord, we welcome you here today. Be glorified, we pray, in the name of Jesus. Now, just before we, um, we continue, I just want us to pray um, again, but this time to pray for Beryl. Um, she was going to be picked up uh, this morning, but at the time, um, she'd had a fall, and uh, the ambulance was there to take her into <coughs> hospital. So let's pray um, for her, that God will keep her and provide for her. Okay. Myrtle, would you like to come and, and pray, please? Thank you. Lord, oh God, we just lift Beryl before you, oh God. Lord, you know the circumstances. Oh God, we just pray that, Lord, you just put the right um, medical profession um, people from the medical profession there on her case, Lord of oh God. Lord, that she will not wait too long in the waiting room, oh God. That she'll be seen too, Lord of oh God, and given the right specialist care. Just pray that, Lord, that the care that she needs to, um, you'll just heal her, Lord, and any additional care that she needs to um, have when she returns home, Lord of oh God. That you'll put things in place, Lord of oh God, that she'll get every um, assistance that she needs to be able to cope better in the home, Lord of oh God. Lord, just bless her, Lord, and keep her, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, worship team. Morning, everyone. Morning. Morning. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Hello. Yes, we've come to worship. We've come to give our God the praise. Amen? Amen. Amen. Are you ready to stand and worship the Lord? Amen. 
Amen. Yes. Amen. <laughs> okay, the song we're going to sing is My Savior, Redeemer, Amen. lifted me from the miry clay. There are times when we are going through things in life and we need to be lifted. Amen. Yes? Amen. Jesus can do that for you. Amen. 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 Trust in Him. Talk to Him. Have your faith in Him. He will lift you high. Amen. Amen. He will give you that spirit that you will need to be lifted. Amen. Let's sing this song together. My Savior, Redeemer. Ready? My Savior, Redeemer, lifted me from the miry clay. Almighty, morning just to give him that part of our Amen. lives to praise him to honor him Amen. Amen? Amen we're gonna sing that song because he is our Redeemer Amen. he has saved us Amen. yes there is a lot going on in the world today but we're here to give him thanks Amen, Amen. Amen. we're here to pray for the one another pray for the country that we're supporting Amen let us come together again let's sing this song my Savior and Redeemer. Think of what he's done for you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Here we go again. My Savior, Redeemer, lifted me from the miry clay. Almighty, forever, I will never be the same because you came near.
church. Amen. We need to be singing that from our lips. His praises. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The next song we're going to sing is, a, again, an oldie. <laughs> it's called, When the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Like David in the days. We're not David. I can assure you that. But we can take some imitation of him. Yeah? What he did, what we've learned in the scriptures about David, how he sang, pray, and how he danced before the Lord. And we can do that too in our own way. Amen? Amen. So the song, as you see, when the spirit of the Lord is within my heart, I will sing as David sang. Amen. So you can do it your way, how you want to do it, but let us give it unto Jesus. Amen? Amen. 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 Here we go. Here we go. One, two, three. When the Spirit of the Lord moves within my heart, I will sing as David sang. When the Spirit, when the Spirit of the Lord moves within my heart, I will sing as David sang.
we call your name right now. We praise, we dance, we sing before you, O Lord, because you are God worthy of this praise. Let our hearts come before you, Lord, just to honor you, you alone, O God. You have done so much for us, O God, where we could just give you the praise, give you the thanks and the glory. Lord, in this place, let our hearts reach out to you because you are God and you continue to be Lord of our lives. Hallelujah. We praise your name. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 
can praise you. Our lips can honor you, O oh Lord. We praise the name of Jesus. We praise you. Lord, in this hour, we need you right now. Whatever needs we have, O oh God, we need you. Lord, as we come with our hope and arms, Lord, accept our prayer before you. In every area, O oh God, accept. We know you are God. We know you are the Lord of all creation. We thank you. I need thee. Oh, I need thee. We need him every hour of the day. Every second of the day we need him. We need him.
as we worship you, O oh God. We honor and praise your name, O oh God, from our hearts, from the lips of our mouth, we worship you. From our whole being, O oh God, we give it all to you. Let your name be honored, O oh God. Let your name be praised. Oh, from the depths, O oh God, let us praise you. Continue to be Lord. You are Lord. You are the true living God. Can we um, take the offering this morning? You, yes, just to say that we've got a short talk for the children, um, the younger ones before they go out. Um, senior class um, will be staying in, um, so it's just the uh, younger ones who will go out to today when we've had the children's talk, okay? Father God, we just want to give you all the glory and all the praise. We just want to thank you for being in here today, your presence, Lord, your Holy Spirit reigning in here today. Lord Jesus, we want to thank you for each and every one that has given today, Lord Jesus. Bless them, Lord. And for those who couldn't give, Lord Jesus, we bless them. And we just want to give this to your kingdom, Lord, for your work. We give all glory and all praise to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Simone, you're going to do Good morning, everyone. How are you? I'm Simone, and I'm from Latin Link. I am also from Brazil, so that's why I have a funny accent, <laughs> so you can hear my accent. But last night, I had a cooking lesson from my daughter, and she tells me that I did great, but I don't trust her. Because she's my daughter, she must be up to something, and she wants something. And I heard that children are the best ones to tell the truth. So I wonder if someone would like to come to the front and try one of the things I brought with me that I made last night and tell me if you <clears throat> like it. Can I have one, someone that is you know, brave enough to step up and come here and try one of this. Come on then, brave girl. <laughs> now, this has a lot of sugar. So can you take sugar? Can you take milk? <laughs> and all of the other things, is it all right? Can you, uh, I, yeah, you're not, you're. I don't know if there is nuts, I can't guarantee. I'm so sorry, Lock. I'm sure one of them won't have, but I can't guarantee. Come on then. I am so sorry, my love. Here we go. If you want, I'll tell you if this is any good. It's going for the chocolate one. Here, yeah, try and tell me. But you have to be very honest. Are you an honest person? Depends. <laughs> love honesty. I can trust her. I can trust her. It's good. Oh, good. 
So would you like to call off one of your friend, brave friends and see if they want to try one? Which friend? Go on, Ben. Every. Dan, sorry, Dan. Dan, are you honest? You ch through? Come on then, try one. Here we go. And let me know if you like it. Is it good? Oh, he says it's good. Okay, we got, is it always very serious like that, mom? <laughs> very good. You enjoyed that? Now, Fia, would you like to go and share with someone at the very back, so you, an adult, to be as honest as you are? Can I give you one and you to go at the very back and share with someone and ask them if they like it? Would you do that for us? Go on now. Hold the tight, so it's going to fall. Who are you going to choose? Who's going to be the brave one? <laughs> grandma, of course. <laughs> Can always trust a grandma. Let's see if she's going to enjoy it and she's going to like my... Very nice. Uh, now, Dan, would you like to go and share with somebody else as well? Go on then. Pick one. Or would you like to try a white one first? And tell me if you like. Is it good? Better? No? Oh, okay. So choose one and go. You want that one? Go on then. Go and share with somebody else for us. Anybody? Sorry? The, the white one is better. Oh, here we go, you see. You have to taste it properly. <laughs> he is really picky. There's more here then, so there's no problem. Oh, mom, yeah. How is it, mom? It's really nice, very good. So who else wants to try one? Can I have another one, another, another taste? Come on then. Come in. Yeah, go on. Tell me your name. Amari, are you an honest person? Can I trust that you're going to try one and really, really tell me the truth? Okay, go on. <laughs> oh, someone knows him. <coughs> Sorry, what's your name? Please tell me. Can I trust you? Yeah? With the truth, the whole truth? I think so. <laughs> okay, go on then. Go for it. Try and tell me if you like it. You like it? Amari, are you not sure? He doesn't look very sure. Did you find it too sweet, maybe? No? Is it good? Is it good? <laughs> it's good. Now, I want you to go and share. Get one from here and share with somebody else there. Is that all right? I'll give you a white one here. And you go and share with somebody. And I give you a brown one. And you go and share with somebody, whoever you want to share with. <laughs> Some. Oh, is it is his cousin very good? You don't like it. Thanks for your honesty. <laughs> you have to be honest. Thank you for your honesty. Anyway, guys, what I want, uh, I will put it is outside so everybody, I'll put it on the table there and everybody can come and have and can have a little taste of it. Uh, if you want, it is very sweet, I must add. So uh, it's got a lot of um, good things in it. <laughs> they might not be as good for you, but they are good. <laughs> they taste good. So um, see, when we get something new and something that is good, we have to share with others, don't we? We can't just keep the good things for ourselves. And when we meet Jesus, we meet the best, don't we? So we have to go, and we have to go far and share with everybody. 
what good we have found. So that's, kids, that's for you. If you found Jesus, if you have him, you have to go and you have to share him as far and wa as, in, as wide as possible with everybody. So everybody can meet Jesus. And afterwards, come and meet me at the back and get a little bit of a sweet, the adults as well. Thank you. Thank you. That is wonderful. Thank you so much. All right, children, you can go and take your sweet teeth, um, little ones, through to uh, Sunday Club, please. Uh, remember that uh, senior class is staying in today. Okay, Simone. Hopefully we've got a presentation in a minute, hopefully, he says. Yeah, there we go. I'm not sure how I follow that, really. <clears throat> I don't like the white ones. Um, my name's Terry. I work for Latin Link uh, as well. I'm actually married to Simone. It's a real privilege to be here this morning. Thank you so much for opening your church to us this Sunday morning. And thank you for your support of Mike and Esther over so many years. And through them, your support of our mission. If you hear nothing else, just, just hear our thanks to you for that. It really is a real blessing for Mike and for Esther and for us, all you've done over so many years. In fact, many years ago, I was almost blessed by, by Mike because um, somebody gave the offering uh, of a church to the mission for Terry, and it ended up with me. And I was really excited for a while, and then I discovered it was actually for Mike and Esther Terry and had to return it. But the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Um, I wonder, if I was to get you all to write a verse on a piece of paper, I wonder what verse you would write down. If I said, write an important verse, what verse would you write down? I don't know. There would probably be a whole host of things that you would write down. But I bet that somebody would write this one down. For God so loved the world <clears throat> that he gave his one and only son, whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. I wouldn't be surprised if somebody wrote that down. And I love this verse because first and foremost, it speaks to me. For God so loved me that he gave his one and only son that if I believe in him, I might have eternal life. And I love it because it speaks to to you as well. And when we talk to people, and when we take them to the Bible, often that is the first verse we show them. When we open the Bible and we try and explain the Christian faith, often this is the first verse, isn't it? Because it puts Christianity in just a few words. God sent his son to save us. But if I'm honest, I think for most of my Christian life, I didn't really give much attention to that bit there, the world. I applied the verse to myself, but I didn't think much wider that really actually Jesus wants the whole world saved. He wants every person in every place, not just me, not just my friends, not just Birmingham. I've got a funny accent because originally I'm from Bristol. Um, don't hold that against me. I moved up here when I was six, but somehow I've not quite managed to pick up all of the local accent. But God doesn't care just about me and Bristol and Birmingham. He cares about the whole world. And this verse tells me that there is a need for us to be involved in evangelism. Simone's already touched on that. It was mentioned beforehand. There's a, there's a need for us to be involved in this idea of spreading the good news to somebody else. If you've got something good, you go and tell somebody else. When you find a great deal in the supermarket, you tell your friends. Yet often we don't quite manage to tell people about Jesus at the same thing. But there's a call for us to actually tell other people about Jesus. But as I became a Christian. I became a Christian when I was 14. I don't come from a Christian family. And when I became a Christian, I soon discovered that God cares more, no, not more, God cares as well about how I live now, not just about my eternal salvation. God is really interested in my day-to-day -day life. He wants to heal me. He wants to restore me. He wants me to make me the fullness of what I could be. And that's what he wants to do for everybody, isn't it? And I can't help wondering, when I read the Bible and when I realize that, what God thinks when he sees people living in, in, in conditions like this. I, I just can't help but wonder what, what, what goes through God's mind. 
when he sees people like that, when he, when he hears about people who've been trafficked in the sex trade, when he, when he sees people living in poverty, when he sees street children, what does God think about that? The problem I have is that when I read the Bible, I think I probably already know the answer to that question. Because if I start to read through the Old Testament law, I find that there is command after command for us to look after the poor, the marginalized, the orphan, the widow, the people on the fringes of society. I just find that all the way through. That lovely book of Ruth in the Bible, those four little chapters, they are just the application of God's law of how you're supposed to care for somebody in a desperate situation. Deuteronomy 15.4, God says, there shall be no poor among you. That's a command from God that there should not be poor among us. And three verses later, he says, if there are poor among you, I command you to have an open hand towards them. It just strikes me as a Christian that when we have people living in poverty and desperation, it is something that God not only does not tolerate, but commands us to do something about. And if... If I think about it, I think when I read the New Testament, that Jesus tends to pick up on themes and he tends to amplify them. And within the New Testament, in Matthew 25, I find these words, which I think are just so important for us as, as, as individuals. Move on? Yeah. Then the king said to those on his right, Come you who are blessed by my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you fed me. I was thirsty, and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you cared for me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous one to reply, <clears throat> Lord, whenever did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you a drink, or a stranger and show you hospitality, or naked and give you clothing? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will say, I tell you the truth, when you did this to the least of one of these my brothers and sisters, you did it to me. Jesus takes it further than being a command from God. He says, actually, what you do for other people is a direct reflection of what you do for me. And he does that in the last part of this, by linking the things. What you do for other people, you're actually doing for God. There is something about how we treat other people and our relationship to God. And if we have more time, we can look at the second part of this bit, which is slightly worrying, because it even says if we have no care for other people, it questions whether or not actually we love God, and it questions our salvation. Jesus links the things together, this need to care for other people. For that reason, it's not a surprise to me when I um, so going to move on. Yeah, it's just not a surprise for me when I look at Mark 12, 30 and 31, and he's asking it to sum up the law in two things. He says, "Love the Lord your God, and love your neighbor as yourself." What does it mean to love your neighbor as yourself? Well, when I've got a problem. I want someone to help me. I got a call yesterday morning from a good friend of mine. They've moved back to this area. They don't know other people. She said, we called for an ambulance, and it hasn't turned up. And her husband had emergency surgery this morning for a ruptured appendicitis. Like, can you help us get to the hospital? You know, when you're in need, you want other people to help you, don't you? And, and God is saying, treat other people in the same way you want it. In their moment of need, they just wanted somebody to turn up. That, that's how we are. And God says, when you do that for other people, you're doing it for me as well. As Christians, we are clearly called to evangelize other people. Often we are not very good at it, and I include myself in this. But we're also called to care for people, and we're called to seek to transform their lives. And this is not a new thing. If we go back in church history, I used to teach church history for a decade. That's, that's kind of boring, isn't it? You know, it's not the subject everybody jumps out of bed and wants to, wants to come to. But I love John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist, an out-and-out -out evangelist, but he also put a rule in place for his people. He said, you know, you tell your neighbors about Jesus, but you also live by this rule. 
you to do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. This is a guy that had a calling to evangelize other people and was good at it. But he saw the need to care for others as well. So he, he actually treated their ailments. He wrote books on medicine. He opened pharmacies that were free for the poor. He um, looked after orphans. He looked after widows. When he was sick himself at 72 years old, he was still going door to door asking for money to help the poor. And when he died, it was custom in the days that you put black cloths over the windows and he insisted they were good quality so they could be taken down afterwards and made into dresses for ladies that didn't have decent clothing. This is a guy that could have said, God has called me to evangelize, but at the same time, he felt that he needed to care for the poor and the marginalized. That's the call on our lives, and it's not a new thing. You can look at multiple examples. William Boo, founder of the Salvation Army, great evangelism. Great man of God. His wife said to him, you'll never evangelize people whilst they're poor and hungry. And that transformed the way he did things, and it transformed the Salvation Army. One of the early um, Roman emperors complained about the Christians, and his complaint was, they care not only for their poor and sick, but they're caring for ours as well. What a great complaint to have against you. There is something in the Christian faith, isn't there, that calls us to do these two things. We are called to evangelize others, we're called to care for others, and we're called to disciple others as well, aren't we, to help them to move on in the Christian faith. But how and where do we do that? How and where do we do that? Well, for some people, you're called to do that locally here in Birmingham. You don't have to go very far to find needs. I don't know the area here, but I guess if you step outside the door, you're going to find people with needs. I noticed that you've got a building project going on, which is, which is hoping to meet the needs of the local community. We don't have to go far. You might even find people in your own congregation. For other of us, we... Uh, we're called to serve abroad, and that's great. But how do, how, do we, how do we know, and why does God call us abroad? I think one of the reasons that God calls some people to other countries is because of this verse in the Bible. We have different gifts according to the grace given to us. I think that God has provided the church with every gift, every resource, and everything it needs to accomplish his mission. But they're not all in the same place at the same time or even in the same culture. So sometimes God will take person from one place and one culture to take part of the message of Christianity to another place. That's why we've got mission societies. It is God moving people around to different places to meet different needs. And I think one of the questions that is hardly ever asked is where do you want me to serve you, God? It is all too easy for us to wander through life doing bits and pieces without ever stopping saying, am I in the place you want me to be, God? And I think that was part of my Christian life for a very long time. I was, I was trying to do what I thought was right. I never said to God, do you want me here? Do you want me here? Some words I found that are really helpful for me in my personal life are these. The place God calls you to is the place where your deep gladness or passion or gifts and the world's deep hunger meet. I found that to be really good for me personally. God made me, he made you with certain gifts, certain abilities, certain resources, and he made you to fit into the world and use those for his kingdom. The place God calls you to is where your deep passion and your gifts and your abilities meet with the world's hunger. In my case, that took me from working sort of with electromechanical stuff. I used to work for various companies here. I really love messing with anything mechanical. Um, I'm looking for another old motorbike to do up at the moment. That, that just really makes me tick. But God pulled me out of that, and he took me to the Czech Republic, and then to Italy and Russia, and then to Brazil for 12 years, and then back to the UK as a Baptist minister, and then through a series of events, back to working for a mission agency, and then I ended up with heading up the mission work in this country. It was never on my agenda. I didn't even apply for the job I've got. That, that, that's how God sort of influences the way things are. So I, I ended up working for Ladding Link. 
And you can ask, why do I work for LatinLink? Why Latin America? It's a continent that's often quite forgotten. Um, when we hear about it, we often think of something that is growing. Uh, this should have come up in steps. I'm not sure why it hasn't. We often think of a place where a lot of people come to Christ, and that's true. There are, there are huge numbers of people who've turned to Christ in one way or another in Latin America. We, we think of immense riches, and there are riches in Brazil, the context I know well, the likes of which I've not seen in this country. We, we also think of it being a place where um, mega churches are. You can't see the picture because it, it, it is, it's pretty small, but there's a helicopter pad on, on top of this church for the pastor to land on a Sunday morning. Now, I don't know how your minister arrives at church. But my, my guess is it's probably not by helicopter. And sometimes people think of it as a holiday destination, and it is. But in the midst of that, there are other things going on. When, when I lived in Brazil, I used to like to ask people, what do you think of you know, the UK? And they would describe people in suits, bowler hats, briefcases, and rain. And there's part of that that's true, but there's part of it that's also not true, isn't there? We don't all live like that all the time. And when you think about Latin America, all of these things exist. But in the midst of that, there's also a whole host of other things. 20% of the population have no access to healthcare because they're so poor. That's, that's a huge number, isn't it? In the pandemic in Brazil, you not only had to find a hospital, you had to take your own oxygen cylinder with you. And if you didn't have one, it was your problem, not the hospitals, because they just basically run out. One in three Latin Americans lives in poverty, and you know, that, that's the lower end of poverty. That, that's close on 200 million people living in poverty. Conservative estimates think that there will be something like 8 million children sleeping on the streets of Latin America tonight. Higher figures put it at about 25 million or plus. Venezuela, the political problems there means that there are 7 million Venezuelan refugees now. That's a huge number, isn't it? It makes our migrant challenge um, look insignificant. And these aren't bad people. These are just people looking for a home where they can live, where they can be, where they can exist, where they can be safe. In Brazil, there will be something like 100,000 murders this year because of the problems of poverty and the problems of... When you, when you mix poverty and wealth together, you will get violence. If you want to see the countries that have problems with it, they've almost always got those two things. And problems with drugs. It's, it's not a very safe place to be. Well, the, the gospel should transform that. We lived in Brazil, which is considered to be a Christian country. We lived in a town that was considered to be one of the most Christian towns, and yet the problem still persisted. There was still poverty, there was still need, there was still an awful lot of violence. Everyone in the houses behind us had been held up at least once. The gospel should be transforming. There is still a massive amount to do. And in Argentina, I've not checked for a while, this is probably about four months, five months ago when I last looked, but the inflation was running at 109%. It kind of makes our crisis look like a non-starter, doesn't it? Yeah, it's a huge problem. There is massive needs in Latin America. There are needs in the social side, but there are also needs in the spiritual side. We have a desperate need for more Bible college and for pastoral training. There are some people doing amazing work that have never been trained at all to be the minister of church, and, and that's great. But, you know, there are some people who are called to be a doctor, and when I break my leg, I'd rather they had training as well. And I think the same is true with pastors. It's great if somebody has a natural ability, but if we can train them. There's a desperate need for resources in their own language and written by themselves. Because when you take a foreign book and translate it, it normally talks about foreign problems and foreign context. So there's a desperate need for resources. There's a desperate need for discipleship. You would think if a town claimed to have 25% Christians that you should see that reflected in culture. There's a lot of work still to do in the area of discipleship. Prosperity theology is a huge problem in Latin America. Most of these mega churches you see are the name it and claim it gospel. They tell the poor to give everything they've got to the church and God will give you more back. And then people come in and they give what they can't afford. And the church does not do the bit of caring for the needy and the poor and the marginalized. And then the people lose faith. Much of the growth in Latin America is because the back door of the church is just slightly smaller than the front door because people are moving back to secularism. There's a huge amount of work to be done. So as a mission agency, we are currently um, 
trying to help to get, create Bible-believing Christian communities in, in, in every part of Latin America. From the UK, we work in nine Latin American countries at the moment, and we also work in Spain, um, trying to take gifts and resources to people who need them. But at the same time, we recognize that Latin Americans have gifts that they can give to us. So what we're actually doing now is bringing people the other way, because like I said, bits of the kingdom are in different places. We're bringing people the other way, because they are really good at evangelism, and they are really good at getting to know people, and they are just open in a way that we're not. So they're, they're, we're trying to bring people in two directions, and we're trying to work really across four programs. We're trying to work across evangelism and discipleship, because if you don't know Jesus, there's no point in making your life good in this lifetime if you're just going to die at the end of it and not go to heaven. We care about this lifetime, but we care about the future as well. So we're working evangelism and discipleship. We are very involved in training people for ministry and for um, training people in the churches, helping them to understand their Christian faith as well. And Mike and Esther have been involved in that. Publishing and resources. Um, some of our mission have been involved in producing the first commentary that actually uh, is written by Latin America that covers a whole Bible and speaks into some of their context. Alongside that, we um, are heavily involved in care and social action with people working in lots of different ministries because we think that God wants to restore lives. If I look at what I want God to do, it's really interesting, isn't it? When we pray, we often pray like a bit like a shopping list, don't we? All the things I need. Well, sometimes some of the things I have are the things other people need. So we're trying to work in these, these sort of social areas to help people. Alongside that, um, we recognize that sometimes people don't need other people. So what they need is just resources. So we have more recently started funding some projects. We uh, had a big push during the pandemic to help with people who didn't have. In Bolivia, the government's advice was you can only leave your house once a week for about an hour. You can't work. And if you've got no food, our solution is you put a white flag out your window and hope your neighbors help. That was the reality. So we had a big appeal for that. We worked with a Bible college in central Brazil that were trying to fund one of their teachers. They've got one highly trained teacher, but if they don't have the money to pay him, he'll have to move on, so we're involved in that. We have a small-scale project in Ecuador where we're trying to help kids to get um, uniforms for school because you can't go to school without a uniform, and if you don't go to school, you get behind, and then you don't go to school, and then that leads to a whole life of uh, problems. We work with some children who've um, been victims of conflict in Colombia. We're funding a small-scale project. Used to have missionaries there. They don't need the missionaries now. What they need is the help to actually be able to carry it on. So that's going on. Children that have been orphaned by AIDS in Ecuador is another thing we're just starting to bring some funding in for, though we've worked with it for a long time. And we're now funding some local church workers as well. So that's, that's kind of the general overview of what we're doing. And Simone's now going to share a little bit with us about some more specific examples of that. So, uh, Latin Link, we, um, how, do we, how do we work? What do we do and how do we work? One of the things we do... It's going the wrong way. Oh, got crunched. So we work, we have uh, people, our main thing is people. We love people. And people come to us, and what we do with them, we have three programs that, uh, that we, people get involved with, and they're called Step, Strive, and Stay. And they go step, you step out, and it's one step. If stride is a little bit longer, it's a little bit more commitment, you have to be wanting to do something for longer, and it stays when you go to stay somewhere. And I'll just talk a little bit about, oh, wrong way again, uh, our short-term program. Now, picture this. A group of people that have never met get together to go somewhere they have never been before. They can't even speak the language of the people to do some work there. Now, that's the stuff of nightmares for some people, isn't it? That you'll get... Uh, to, to do something like that is the stuff of nightmare for some. But I tell you, for people that, uh, that step out onto our short-term program, they say to us and they tell us it's actually life-changing and life-transforming. 
That's the word that most of them come back after four months or three weeks in Latin America and tell us that that's what happened to them. And this is, this is one of our step teams for 1993. They went out to Peru in 1993 and they came back. They still do a step reunion. We, they call it the step reunion. Every so often they get together. Uh, quite a few of them still serve with us and quite a few of them have served with us and they've gone there and they are still involved in mission. And for them, it's definitely what is called, it was a life transforming. And um, last summer, we sent teams to Mexico and Costa Rica, Argentina and Bolivia, Peru, which was a church team from London. They went to, they, they, as a church, they, had a, they, they have a connection with a church in, in Peru and they wanted to go. So we sent them there. And there are a team to Colombia to work with uh, Venezuelan refugees and a team to Ecuador. So these are the teams we sent last year from four months to three weeks. And we received a team from Brazil that came to work in London and, and Somerset and they came and they spent five weeks uh, help, uh, with, a, with the church doing kids, kids camps. They did everything. You can imagine they've done it. So they came from Brazil, all the way from Brazil uh, to do that. And then this next year, we're hoping to send a team to teams to Guatemala. And so they're going to go one team. The team is going to go for four months in March, and they are going to go for f uh, half of that time in the city, Guatemala City, working with street children in Guatemala City. And then half of the time, they're going to go to Lake Actilan, which which is uh, working with a, a rural community. So they're going to get the full. Uh, the full, full on what Latin America is about, city and rural at the same t in, in, in four months. We're also hoping to send a team to Ecuador and, and Bolivia. If we have enough people applying, we, we're going to do that. And also a team, probably in the summer, to Colombia for, for three weeks to again to work with refugees. That hasn't been, we haven't finalized the details of that one yet. And as well, we are sending a team uh, this year to Cochabamba, which is a team of people that are all profoundly or, or he have a hearing impediment or deaf. And they are going to work with the deaf community in Cochabamba in, in, in Bolivia for, for a few weeks. And the good thing about, about the deaf community is that they can communicate across cultures. Because although there are different, different sign languages, they are still enough, they can actually communicate, which is a, a big advantage. You would think there's a big advantage to have there, which is lovely. So they will be going this year and hopefully we'll send another team next year. So, uh, so that's something we will be doing with the STEP with, with our short-term program. But then if going in a group and getting to know people that way very um, uh, close by is not your thing, well, maybe you want to go solo. And we have, we have a program for people, for individuals or families or couples uh, that want to go for a minimum of six months to Latin America, that want to, 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 let, to, to let things go here for six months at least and go. And I'll give you some examples of those that have, have gone. Uh, Jordan and Zoe, uh, Jordan is actually a, a software engineer and Zoe is a social worker. They decided to, to get a career break and go to Guatemala for one and a half years. So they are there working with, with a project. Zoe is open to work with a project with women victim, victims of abuse. And Jordan is working, is gonna work in a community project in Guatemala City. So they, they've stepped out and they're gonna stay there for 18 months. Hopefully more, we're hoping to get them for longer. Uh, Michael and Christine are a retired couple. Michael is a police officer. Christine was working for BT for a long time. They retired, but they fell in love with Peru, absolutely fell in love with the country, with the people, and now they moved to Peru. They lived in the jungle in Moyabamba, and they, it's, it's, a, it's a big town, I'll be honest with you. It's not like, it sounds more like, uh, it's just because it's not what we think of Peru, but it's, it's, it's up in the jungle. It's a town, a small town up in the jungle, and they are going to work with a church and a project reaching out to elderly people in the community there. And uh, they finished in December. 
And we're, we're hoping that they will continue and they will go back because they really fell in love with the people of Peru. And this is Joy. Joy is an art student for university. She decided that she, she needed to take to do a nine month um, 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 placement and she decided to use those nine months to go to Latin America and work with kids in Latin America and use her arts skill to, to, to work with the kids. And she's working in two projects, one that is uh, working with ki kids with disabilities and one working with families that are victims of violence, domestic violence. So then Joy is in, is in Ecuador. And this is my lovely Maribel, she's from Bolivia. And she spent a year in Manchester working with a church in, Ma in Old Trafford. Uh, and they loved her so much that she's coming back in November and she's going to work at the EUA 92 University. I don't know if you have heard about them. And she's going to do chaplaincy there. Uh, they love her there. And she's going to reach out to the students at the university there um, uh, through her chaplaincy work and working with the church in Old Trafford as well. And she's a lovely lady. We absolutely adore her. And she's hopefully getting her visa to come back in, in November. And that's Johnny, and Johnny is from Guatemala, and he's a musician, and he wants to he wants to go to the Nexus School in Coventry. Have you heard of the Nexus School in Coventry of worship? It's a worship school in Coventry, but he needs to improve his English. So he's coming to Winchester uh, next week, actually arrives, and uh, he's gonna be there for a year and working with Eddie, who is a pastor, at some, a minister at St. Barnabas Church, who was on step, he, he's a minister, but did three weeks in, in, in Guatemala with us, met Johnny, and then Johnny is coming to do a stride placement in his church in this country. So we do both, both ways, really. We, we send people to Latin America, but we also bring people in. And then we have our stay members, and stay can go from um, two years to a lifetime. As you know, Mike and Esther are still there, although they are not officially uh, working with Latinlink. They are retired from we, uh, retired from with a Latinlink a few a few years ago. Now they are still very much involved in ministry. Is still very much loved by the Latinlink community in Argentina and by the church, and is still serving there. They went to Argentina in 1976. And they, uh, I mean, I mean, their kids are there. Most of their kids are there. They have one or two here now, and one grandson, I think, has come back. And but most of them are, are there in Argentina. And uh, I'm sure you guys know all about them. And um, they come. And this is Ruth. Ruth is an occupational therapist and physiotherapist, and she works in Peru. So one of the things we take for granted in this country is that people with disability will be looked after and they will have things, they will have um, programs for them and they will have things to do. One of the things in Latin America is that normally people with disability are left to, their mothers normally have a really hard time because they have to care for those with disability with no help from anyone apart from it may maybe a handful of people around them. And one of the things Latin Inca has always have a, had a passion for, and our missionaries have had a passion for, is to raise the profile of people with disabilities in Latin America. And uh, so many years ago now, one of our missionaries started what is called the Shalom Center in Arequipa in Peru, which is linked to an international school, which was also started by Latin Link. But she started specifically this project to work with disabled kill children and helping the moms and giving the moms uh, a respite and help and guidance and, and then just help the kids to recover more and to have a, 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 a better life. So Ruth uh, gave up her work in Northern Ireland as a, as a physiotherapist and as an occupational therapist, and she moved to Arequipa, where she's been there for, for a few years now, and then she works with the families. Her dream is to go, to go out and to work with specifically with the moms and visiting the families and actually taking the love of Jesus with her when she visits the families. So she's just one of in, within Latin Link that works in that area. 
Oops. It doesn't. Would you turn that for me for some reason? Oh, here you go. Is he gone? Ruth. Okay, Paul and Suze. So Paul and Suze work in Brazil, in the northeast of Brazil. They work with a football program that uh, reaches out to kids in a, in a, in an, it, Recife, the place where they live, is absolutely an enormous, it's 12 million people around them. And, and it is, it's, it, the levels of poverty there are quite, uh, quite hard, it's hard. And they, they have developed this project that uh, uses football as a means of reaching out to young people to disciple them. As you can imagine, this is a long-term project. You don't do anything just in a visit. You need someone there for a long time to work with the kids. And they do that, both of them. Uh, and they're getting married now in February. They're coming back to get married and they are gonna go back and continue their work uh, there. And this is Raquel or Rachel, as she's come, become to know. Rachel, Raquel is from Brazil. She was invited to come to this country to work with a church in Chad in Somerset, and she came for a year. They loved her so much, they invited her to come back, and the church, now we employ her, but she works for the church, and she works with a Portuguese-speaking community in Chad, and she works for, the, the church has a community project, very much what you guys are trying to do here. They are doing in Chad and Raquel, uh, works with them, and she is just phoned me this week that she wants to do another three years, and the church wants to renew her contract for another three years. She's an absolutely star, and uh, and, the ch and and really doing a great, great job there uh, with the church. She also just got married to Victor, and and they are yeah they 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 want to go somewhere else afterwards. She was telling me that's what they are planning to do. So these are just some of the examples of the things that we are doing, the things we are involved with. And the, the question is always, how can you get involved? How can, what can you do and, and what and, and how? Um, one of the first things you can do is pray. Uh, and we have found that as the older generation, they know how to pray. And it's been very hard to engage younger people in prayer and we we really need prayer prayer is vital for what we do without prayer we we're not going to go anywhere without people praying for us so please do pray for us and uh, there are ways you can do that easily it's just by going to our website or by engaging with us at the back there and asking us and we can send you weekly emails where we can give you a little bit more background of someone and you can pray for them and it, it really pops in your, in, your, in your email every Monday morning. You open it, you read, and you pray for that. There is also a prayer calendar at the back which tells everybody, all our missionaries, and you can pray for them. So those pre, please do pray, pray for us. Another way you can engage is by going. Um, I don't know what God's call is in your life, but if you have a plan, if you have a, a calling to go, if you want him to do something, to step out into something new, into something different, something transformative, come and talk to us. Uh, go. Uh, you can receive. You can host a Latin American. I don't know if the church is open to hosting a Latin America. The church can receive a Latin America. You can host uh, a Latin America. That's another way you can engage uh, with the work we do. You can remember us. It might be that you don't feel cold to go that you don't feel called to, to step out. But it might be that in your walk of life, there are people that tell you they want to do something different. Remember Latin link. And it might be that you're just gonna pop into someone, something that's gonna transform their lives, that you're gonna say, why don't you give Latin link a ring? Send us an email, send them an email, and you don't know what God can do from there. So remember us. And another one is obviously, obviously is given. We can't do everything we do without money. And, and there is an opportunity to give to our missionaries to the work we do. And, and that is another way people can engage with us. But most of all, it's always prayer. And it's always at the front, front of what we do is we need people to pray for us and pray for what we do.
And uh, if you can engage in that way, please do. And come and see us at the back. We, we have some literature with us. You can take with you some information, some sweets as well, if you're, uh, if you're that way inclined. Uh, come and, and, and check out with us. And uh, thank you very, very, very much for having us and for listening to us. Thank you. Terry and Simone, thank you so very, very, very much. Um, it's been really fantastic um, listening to what you have to say. Um, I wonder, um, Chris, I'm going to pick on you because I know I can. <laughs> Please would you come and pray both for Terry and Simone, and would you also pray for uh, the work in Latin America from whatever uh, point of view you want to pray, and then we'll have the notices after that. You know, we are all called to, called to evangelize. And if you don't feel comfortable evangelizing, you can always support somebody else who is. You know, so they're doing a great job. So let's pray. Father God, I just want to be with Latin Link right now, Lord, and the people that came here today, Lord, Simone and... What's your name again, sorry? Simone and Terry. Simone and Terry. <laughs> Lord, that you, you will be with them, Lord, and they will know you're with them, Lord, for all that they do. And Latin Link, Lord, Lord, your presence is already in there, Lord, and let it keep persevering in there, and Lord, and encourage people to get involved in this, Lord. We have to look at our hearts, Lord, and know what is in your will and what is your will. Not what we want to do, Lord, but what you want us to do, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so if we could have the uh, notices up, please. Good. Okay, so, yeah, it's, it's been really good today. So, so happy that, uh, that we've been here and that we've heard what we've heard. Um, and I trust also that those of you who are online will be really challenged by what was said. Okay, let's go. Continue to pray for our project. <laughs> we really, really do need you to pray. We need um, many aspects of it, you know, for God to move and, and also for some of you to uh, come and be involved um, in uh, in putting it all together. In particular, um, you've got on here about uh, uh, putting the information together that we're going to be sending off to the uh, different organisations from which we would like to have some money. Um, but we, we need to have the information, the data all put together. So um, if that's something that you can do, then please get in touch with us. Come and see me and we'll... We'll see what you can do. Thank you. And then on the 18th, um, our drop-in center. Oh, I really love this um, opportunity that we have once a month to welcome people from the community to come in, to speak to them. And it really, for me, is reflecting some of what we want to do. It's the developing of what we want to do in the community. So please pray for it. And if you know people who um, would benefit by being with us, then please do um, speak to them, send them in our direction. Okay, so on the 18th of October, it's just a couple of weeks. And then um, Eileen's mum's funeral is going to be in Reading on Friday the 27th at 11 a.m. Sorry, 11.30. Beg your pardon. That's right, Friday the 27th at 11.30. Um, but it is Reading, so if any of you would like to go and would like to go on the coach which has been provided, it leaves here from Beacon at 8.15 in the morning Please, would you see Eileen to um, have her reserve a place for you? 
And please do remember Eileen and family between now and then, and obviously afterwards, but remember them, that God will sustain them, help them uh, to get everything done, um, and that it will be a day when they can um, celebrate her mum and to know the strength of God. Thank you. Okay, so Chris is going to be speaking next week, next Sunday, and uh, we look forward to that. All right, we're back into Matthew. I love Matthew. Um, so please do, do come. Yep, that's it. Um, please get in touch with us if you need to by any of the means on, the, on that slide. Um, but most of all, please do keep close to God and be with us next week. It'll be really fantastic. So thank you. I love the sunshine outside. I hope you do too. Before you go through the door, though, please remember the uh, table with information on Latin link at the back. Okay? Thank you. May God bless you. Thank you.